Hello everybody, it's the Tech Tipster here and today I'm going to answer the question Does the new Raspberry Pi 3 need a heatsink? If you have been following the Pi 3, you'd probably have seen posts on how hot this processor on the Pi 3 gets compared to previous models. So I decided I'll do a few tests of my own and see what temperatures my unit gets to, determine whether or not the CPU is throttled at these high temps, and what effect the installation of a cheap heatsink has on the unit. What I have set up to the bottom right is my Pi 3 unheat synced at the moment with a temperature probe measuring ambient temperature in degrees Celsius. On my screen to the left, I have a putty session open running a temperature and clock frequency script, which displays temp in Celsius, Fahrenheit, and current CPU frequency. And in the background, we have RetroPi booted up, ready for Quake 3 Arena to be loaded as my stress tester of choice. I heard Quake 3 really puts the CPU to the test, and comparing it to running a Dreamcast or PSP emulator, this is definitely true. One other point of note is that I'm pushing my Pi as far as it will go with an overclock to 1.35 gig. On screen you can see my config.txt file with the settings highlighted. If you do want to do this to your own Pi, please do so at your own risk. I haven't had any troubles, but every Pi is different. So now let's start with the Pi sitting idle just after boot. With a 20 degree ambient temperature, my Pi sits at around 50 degrees Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit. Once we load up Quake 3 though, things start to change. Navigating through the menu, we climb up closer to 60 degrees Celsius or 135 Fahrenheit. And then loading up the game, the temps rise again. After almost a minute, we have gone from 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. And then at around 3 to 4 minutes later, we're nudging close to 80 degrees Celsius or 172 Fahrenheit. At this point I left the game running for a while to see if temps would rise, but they held pretty steady and the Pi was running like a champ. So now that we've maxed out at almost 80 degrees, let's see if we can bring these temps down. The first thing we're going to try is... a finger. I noticed while I was playing around that when I brushed the chip with my hand, the temperature would drop. Trying that out a bit further, I saw almost 15 to 20 degree drops when holding a finger on the chip. Now like I said before, the Pi does almost hit 80 degrees, so I recommend using somebody else's finger if you want to try this for any extended period of time. Feel free to try this out with various other body parts, and make sure you report back with your findings in the comments below. Now let's fit our heatsink. While I fit this on screen, I should mention that I bought the cheapest, nastiest heatsink I could find on eBay. This thing costs like 99 cents and doesn't even have a thermal pad or paste applied. I would recommend something with a thermal pad if you do decide to buy one, and this should only cost you a couple of dollars. Prior to fitting it, the temperature was hovering between 77 and 79 degrees Celsius. When I first placed the heatsink on the chip, things looked good, but don't get too excited. It will take some time for the heatsink to warm up and reach a steady state. After another few minutes, we reached our temp. Final results are around 74 to 75 degrees Celsius with the heatsink fitted. This is about a 3 to 5 degrees Celsius drop over no heatsink. So, is it worth it? For how cheap you can get these things, it probably is. And like I mentioned, if you do find a good size heatsink with a thermal pad, you'll probably get a few degrees better than me. So now to answer the question from the start of the video, does the Pi 3 overheat? Now we won't know the answer to this until we see some information from Broadcom on the operating temperatures of their chip. This probably won't happen for a while, so all we can go on is our experience here. So does the Pi overheat? I don't think so. My Pi has been getting very hot that's for sure, but I haven't seen any adverse effects from this heat. It's never crashed. I don't see any artifacts in games, and until I see any evidence that people are seeing these things, I'll probably say no it doesn't overheat. That is just my opinion though, so if you do have a differing opinion or experience, please let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video guys, please subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you guys next time.